mess it up. Right now the chains are broken And I start singing a new song Moving to the rhythm and swaying The joy's overflowing, the burden's gone Right now the chains are broken And I start singing a new song Moving to the rhythm and swaying The joy's overflowing, the burden's gone Right now the chains are broken side today we're going to Psalm 32 and this is so good so if you'll turn with me if you have your Bibles in Psalm 32 it says what happens for those whose guilt has been forgiven what joys when sins are covered over what relief for those who have confessed their sins and God has cleared their record wow so in this earthly realm god asks us to confess our sins repent of our sins turn from our sins and then we have this weight that lift off of us so let's go on there was a time when i wouldn't admit what a sinner i really was but my dishonesty made me miserable and filled my days with frustration. All day and night, your hand was heavy on me, Almighty God. My strength evaporated like water on a sunny day until I finally admitted all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide them. Isn't that powerful? I said to myself, I will confess them to the Lord. And you forgave me, and all my guilt was gone. It's just so important that we really learn from this. If you're weighed down and you feel heavy today, it really could be because you have unconfessed sin in your life. Sometimes it's really hard. Even past sins, maybe that you've not confessed to the Lord, it's just so important that we do that. We admit sin, we confess it, we get it under the blood of Jesus, and then all that heaviness is just gone from us. You know, the Word of God in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 2 Corinthians, actually it's chapter 5, that talks about how Jesus laid His life down, and He was the one 
that paid the price for our sins. All we really have to do for complete freedom this day is confess our sins to the Lord, ask Christ into our heart, and live for Him and be in a life of blessing, peace, joy, and happiness. You know, it does, the entire word does come down to that. It's how we live our life. It's our heart issue. It's the choices that we make. And when we mess up, just really confessing and saying, Lord, forgive me, that was so wrong. Say what it was to the Lord, no matter how hard that might be. It's hard sometimes to get that out of our mouths. Just saying what it is that we have done, confess that, lay it at the foot of the cross, and ask the Lord to forgive our sins. And then we can start our day afresh and new, our life afresh and new. And I'll continue on here in Psalm 32. Now I say that each believer should confess his sins to God when he is aware of them. While there is time to be forgiven, judgment will not touch him if he does this. You are my hiding place, God, from every storm of life. You even keep me from getting into trouble. You surround me with songs of victory. I will instruct you, says the Lord, and guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch your progress. Don't be like a senseless horse or mule that has to have a bit in its mouth to keep it in line. <laughs> I'll say that one more time because that's good. I'll end on that. Don't be like a senseless horse or mule that has to have a bit in its mouth to keep it in line. Just confess your sins and get it under the blood of Jesus today. Can you say hi to Auntie Autumn? Say hi. Oh. do a throwback today with a personal friend of ours, Mark Mitchell. He did this testimony in our studio about 15 years ago and it is powerful. So enjoy this today with Mark Mitchell from Tri-City Recovery. My name is uh, Mark Mitchell. I live here in Bristol, married, I have two children. I have a ministry here in Bristol called Tri-Cities Recovery. Uh, Tri-Cities Recovery is a ministry that uh, reach out to uh, individuals with life-controlling problems. The reason I do what I do is uh, I'm not proud of my, my past and um, uh, some of the decisions that I made, uh, but unfortunately I made some wrong decisions at a young age and uh, started using the drugs and alcohol. Um, at the age of nine, uh, the first tragedy had struck my family and uh, that being that my dad had loaded a pistol and he had taken the pistol and he had put to his head and he had shot and killed himself. This wasn't supposed to happen. This was a man that received war awards for never missing a Sunday school service. Uh, left me real confused, angry, rejected, the whole, whole nine yards. And um, that was the beginning of my rebellion. Uh, you know, it, it brought insecurity on me, the rejection and the embarrassment and so forth. And I started reaching for the things of this world to try to fit in. I started smoking marijuana at 13 years old. Smoking marijuana, drinking alcohol, uh, trying to be cool, just trying to fit in and, and uh, thought uh, I had the world right where I wanted it. Uh, went on through school, uh, went from one drug to the other. Uh, started eating uh, pain pills, uh, would take those occasionally. 
and at the age of 16 years old, I've uh, come across something a little bit more powerful than what I'd ever dealt with before. I knew that I knew that I knew that I opened the wrong door. I had never felt a rush like that in my life. I felt 10 foot tall. I felt like, you know, this is it. This is going to fill the emptiness. This is going to fill the void. I am going places on this. I was locked up at times, put in jail uh, by the age of 19 years old, locked up for a while, uh, get released, get out. And, you know, I just got sick and tired. And I said, I'm going to quit these drugs and alcohol. I said, I'm done with this. And guys, that's when I realized that I was not doing the drugs. The drugs was doing me. It was not that easy just to walk away from uh, the pain pill addiction, the Demerol, the morphine, uh, the homemade crank, the crystal meth. See, the enemy sinks his teeth deep and he disguises himself through the drugs and the alcohol. And I was in a spiritual battle. I didn't know this at the time, but I was in a spiritual battle. And there's one thing that I know for sure, I know now that I did not know then, when you're in a spiritual battle, you need spiritual tools. And I didn't have the tools. I didn't have the Word of God in my life. I didn't have uh, a prayer life. I didn't study my Word. And I had nothing to, to fight with. And I would think about suicide. I'd think about uh, what my dad did. I'd think, you know what? That, that's what I need to do because there's no way I can beat this. I've been locked up. I've been in 30-day programs. I've tried this and I've tried that. And you know, I thought, well, I, I'm, I'm going to try to kill myself. If, if, if the devil gets in your head, your body will follow. And it got to the point that, you know what, I, I'm going to do this. I tried to take my life by jumping through a two-story window. By the grace of God, by the grace of God, I did, not, I did not die. My family come home, calls the ambulance. The ambulance comes to my house. They pull in my yard. The ambulance, the paramedics, they load me in the back of the, uh, of the ambulance and they're getting the, um, the glass out of my head and out of my arm and they're hooking up the IVs. And it was a Christian man that was uh, in the ambulance and he said, man, you need Jesus. I said, man, I said, I, I, need, I need something. I was, I was broken. I was miserable. And guys, I asked God to save me. And here's the thing. God did save me. But unfortunately, I only allowed Him to be my Savior and not my Lord. I wanted fire insurance. I didn't want to burn in a devil's hell, but I would take the Savior part. I said, God, you can save me. But you're not going to be Lord. You're not going to be Lord over my relationships. You're not going to be Lord over my money. You're not going to be Lord over my music. But I'll take the Savior part. And guys, I'll tell you, that won't work. I went back seven times worse, just like the Bible says. And you may think, well, it can't get any worse. I went back seven times worse. Picked up right where I left off. Continue using the drugs. Um... Got myself in a relationship. We're using the drugs. We're partying and doing our thing, a job. And I was working. I was working with this company. And of course, uh, no doubt, still strung out on the oxycotton and the Xanax is just pretty much whatever you could put in a needle. I, I, I would shoot it. And after being at work and being up for several days, I got my hand caught in a machine. And when I pulled my hand out of the machine, it cut off four fingers and. And when I say cut off four fingers, they wasn't dangling. The four fingers was laying, laying on the ground. And, of course, you can see that they sewed them all back on. They packed them on ice, and they med at me to Louisville, Kentucky. Guys, I'll tell you, the worst thing that could have happened. Now, without me having to go on the streets and get my Oxycontin and get my Percocets and my Lortab and my Morphine, and I, now I've got the doctors that are writing it. See, sin will take you further then you want to go, it'll keep you longer than you want to stay, and it'll cost you longer than you want to pay. And I pulled this shot up in a needle, and I, I put it in my arm, and God kept trying to protect me uh, from injecting this in, in my arm. I would try to get a vein. I couldn't hit a vein. I was all over my body trying to hit a vein. And finally, I got to where I could get some blood to register. And I hate to sound so graphic, 
But when I injected, I found the vein, I injected it into my arm. I found myself, after I got it in my arm, I found myself laying flat on my back. Laying flat on my back in a bedroom. A bedroom that I had covered with covers and I'd made it real dark. I had put furniture against my door. I had barricaded myself in this place trying to hide, trying to, to get away from everybody. And when I found myself laying in the floor, I turned my head to keep from drowning on my own vomit. Don't know exactly how long that I laid there. But I was finally able to get up and sit on the corner of the bed. And I'm not a big enough fool to tell you that I got it all together and I just pushed myself up. I had people praying for me. Had grandparents, had church, had family members that were praying for me. They put prayer cloths over top of my door. People were plead, pleading the blood of Jesus on my life, not to, just refusing to let the devil have my life. That is the only reason I was able to get out of the floor and I sit on, I sit on the corner of the bed. And guys, like I told you earlier, I didn't have no prayer life. And I know there's people that are watching that don't have a, a prayer life. They don't know any Scripture. They don't know any of the Word of God. I did not know any of this. But as I sit on the corner of my bed, the reason that I am in the ministry that I am and the reason that I am standing right here tonight to testify is because all I knew was the name of Jesus. And I continued sitting on that bed. I said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And as I would say the name of Jesus, guys, you could literally feel the darkness you could literally feel the darkness leaving my room. He is a God of all comfort. And He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And regardless of what your pain is, or maybe some that are watching, regardless of what our pain is, God knows all about it. God has not forgot about us. God's not walked out on us. He is a friend that sticks closer than a brethren. Well, wasn't that testimony powerful? Oh my goodness. I'd love for you to go um, and share this link, you know, with your family and your friends. You can also watch other programs, other 30 minute programs. Just type in on YouTube, Encounter 222, and you'll see all the 30 minute programs pop up. But we are so thankful that you've been with us today. I pray that this has touched your heart and just changed you forever. If you're struggling today, I just want you to know that just like God changed Mark, He can absolutely change you. Know that freedom is here for you. You may think, I'm never going to get free from this addiction, whatever it, it could be. It could be porn. It could be drugs. It could be alcohol. It could be anger. It could be a, a number of different things. But I just want you to know that just like he changed Mark, and you would never know today, Mark Mitchell is one free man, but he stays in his word. He knows who set him free. He knows that he's free by the blood of Jesus, and he doesn't take that lightly. He studies every day, and he just stays in that word, and that's what you'll have to do. But it's such a privilege and an honor to be able to do that and serve our Lord and just live a life of freedom, joy, peace, happiness. You know you can go through your day with complete peace, the peace of God. And the Word of God says the joy of the Lord is our strength. It says rejoice, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Our day should be filled with victory, not struggle, 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 struggle. So whatever area you are struggling in today, get that thing under the blood. Do you know that Jesus became a curse for us so that we could be set free of sickness, disease, and poverty? Oh my goodness, He paid the price for our freedom. May we never take that lightly. Never, ever, 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 ever. So share this with one of your friends today. Hear the 
Well, guys, can you believe it's been 20 plus years of business here at Everything Goes Furniture. That is amazing, thank you. We have grown so much and we've expanded and we've really been able to make a living doing what God gifted us to do. So if you've not visited us, go onto our website or come see us here at Everything Goes Furniture. And God bless you.